After year one, volume 11.5, we expect Kiyotaka and Kei to have a relationship that would lead to him changing for the sake of Kei. Still, we all have misunderstood Kiyotaka's true intentions regarding Kei and their relationship, which many of the Kyo Kei fans really dislike. Still, I think we should have all seen it coming. We see Kiyotaka does what a normal boyfriend does, what a boyfriend thinks, and what a boyfriend says in the relationship. We read Kiyotaka addressing Kei as his lover slash girlfriend. But not once has he ever narrated in his inner monologues that he loves Kay, only by dialogue and that he loves her. But he never narrated in his monologues that he loves her. Kiyotaka is approaching this in such a detached manner as we have seen him come to everything else like a learning experience. Firstly, his intentions with Kay are about learning the experience of a relationship. He narrated that to him, Kay was like a textbook for me to the opposite sex. He narrated in the epilogue of the last part of Year One, Volume 11.5, this was just one of the explicit explanations for us, the readers, about his intentions and a sign for us to remember that Kiyotaka does not love Kei as we think he does. Even Kiyotaka reaffirms this in the same scene, that he understood that the different future he thinks that would wait for him, where becoming an irreplaceable experience for her wouldn't happen. A part of him hoped for it, still he understood that this future wouldn't happen. But why did he think all this? Let me quickly explain. To understand Kiyotaka's tendency to contradict where on the surface he states in the dialogue or narrates to us readers about stating about something then contradicts himself later. For example, in Year One Volume One, he claims to be someone who stays out of trouble. Yet, in the same volume, you see himself in different situations on multiple occasions. The author gives clues to the readers. The way Kiyotaka narrates this scene is similar to how an actor reminds himself of his role. As someone who dislikes trouble, I decided I'd like to establish proper relationships. Unfamiliar with the notion, I'd spend the day before in preparation, running through different scenarios. Claiming as someone who dislikes trouble, yet also said to have practiced and prepared themselves to establish relationships. As someone, in this phrase, in the context of introspective narration, establishes the character's self-perception. In short, this is Kiyotaka's narration on getting into the role he created himself as a master separate from his actual self in advanced nurturing high school. The reason for this tendency is due to him keeping an external persona as he established in Year One Volume One, keeping his real motivations in the dark. After all, the best way to pretend is to believe it yourself. But why do I have to explain Kiyotaka's tendency to contradict? Because at the time of Year One Volume 11.5, the scene I mentioned earlier, he was aware of this tendency to contradiction. That is why, during the narration, the author clearly stated Kiyotaka's intentions to us, clearing any doubt that if there were to be a moment where he contradicts himself in future volumes, reiterating his reasons, that he entered this relationship because he truly loves Kei, and not using her as a textbook of love to fulfill his own goals. But why was it Kei in the first place? Why did he choose her as the textbook to love? Circumstances have allowed him to do so. There is a reason why he rejected Sato at that time. He had also decided what to do with Kei. These circumstances allowed Kiyotaka to reveal a part of his true self to Kei, which Kei accepted if it meant for her that Kiyotaka would be there for her. But how about the rooftop scene? Why did Kiyotaka choose to save Kei? You need to step back and look at the scene again. Then you'll see a different question. Instead, ask yourself, why would Kiyotaka choose to face Ryu in, despite being free from Chabashira's blackmail? There was a video from Satisfy that misinterpreted Kiyotaka's reason for helping the class, whether it meant that being free from Chabashira's blackmail meant Kiyotaka wouldn't finish what he started or involve himself in class battles anymore. Kiyotaka always wanted to involve himself. Kiyotaka was killing two birds with one stone. To learn, control the environment, also giving results to Chabashira sensei. If he were only focused on the blackmail, then we wouldn't have seen him hold back in a certain level. Reading back to Year 1 Volume 1 to Year 1 Volume 2, where although he claims to dislike trouble, he involves himself in some way, in the class conflicts and his class. The reason he involves himself is because of his urge to learn and control the environment around him, which he has always done since his days in the White Room. If you're enjoying this video so far, please subscribe. I'm trying to hit 20k by the end of the year. Make sure that you're subscribed. Thank you. Returning to the rooftop scene to summarize that part, K was only used to set up the scenario where Ryu and Kiyotaka would face each other, which Kiyotaka had planned from the very beginning. It was no excuse for him to maintain the connection because he knew there was always more to learn from K. Saying he severed his connection with K just because he is free from Chabashira's blackmail is the wrong interpretation. He only did that because he had the freedom to do so. Not everything he does is for K, just like the students around him. There is more to learn from, his amusement, and to use for his own goals. 
Now, to support the idea that Kiyotaka is attempting to nurture romantic feelings for Kei during the relationship, let's go back to Year 2, Volume 6 during the scene with Hirata. If you can't reject her, you would have two choices. You could tell her you don't like her but still date her, or you could lie to her that you do like her and date her. And if while they dated, true love did sprout in Hirata, it could lead to the best possible ending. It doesn't sit right with me, I don't think I should do that. He understood what I was saying, but his emotions stood in the way. Kiyotaka proposed the idea for Hirata to date Michan even if he doesn't like her. If they dated like that, a chance where Hirata would nurture and find himself to truly love Michan could happen. In other words, Hirata dating Michan to help her emotionally at this time she was hurt emotionally after the unanimous poll exam. This idea is similar to what Kiyotaka is doing with Kei. However, the line, and if while they dated, true love did sprout in Hirata, it could lead to the best possible ending. The implication in this line leads to an alternative interpretation. Kiyotaka hoping for that other future to happen, where the feelings of love would sprout and would lead to the best possible ending, but realistically love is not a feeling that you can just nurture because the feeling of love comes naturally and unexpectedly. How Kiyotaka established their romantic relationship was already manipulated by him. The scenario, the circumstances were all set up by him in year 1 volume 11.5. Do I honestly expect myself to believe that Kiyotaka loves Kei knowing that this was his methodology all along? I don't think so. In fact, in year 2 volume 8, the idea of nurturing love was contrasted by Horikita's idea of love. To be honest, I've never been in love with anyone before. I still don't have the feeling and I don't know what it's like. If I go out with you after you told me that you like me, it's possible that I will like you with time. That's what I thought. But I think I'm waiting for the moment when I might fall in love with someone out of instinct without planning for it. As if confirming her own feelings, Horikita said so to Suda. That is the reason for the refusal. She wishes to keep waiting for her first love. Both the ideas where you plan to love, idea by nurture, and to love someone naturally by instinct, idea by nature, are ideas that Kinagasa has repeated and paralleled multiple times, in different forms, within the central themes in the story. Nature v Nurture, Kiyotaka's methodology was a parallel mentioned in the same scene in Year 2 Volume 8. In Year 2 Volume 9.5 Chapter 5, he reflects on what he has learned in his experience regarding love. On the other hand, if you look into the word love, you will find that it says a man and a woman yearning for each other. Yearning. Emotions. I wonder if I have come to know love over these months. That's the first point I think about. I've learned many emotions at this school. Classes, talking with friends, talking with teachers, shopping, having fun. Along the way, I learn what I'm interested in and not what I'm interested in. What I find fun and what I don't find fun. What tastes I like, what tastes I don't like, and so much more. I've learned many things that only lovers can experience by dating Kay. Conversations that only lovers can have. Dates and the act of skin-on-skin -skin contact. That can only happen between lovers. I can say that I have probably taken all the actions that would be model answers. So, can I say I know what it feels like to yearn for someone? The answer is probably no. That doesn't mean I know these feelings. My heart is not shaken in any way since before I started dating Kay. Later on, he describes Kay as an object to learn about love, as he has seen her since Year 1, Volume 11.5. Unfortunately, nothing has changed in what Kiyotaka feels about Kay. He hasn't moved. When they fix their relationship together, the only thing in Kiyotaka's mind is his eagerness to learn, and his dissatisfaction that he didn't learn enough. The relationship is restored. This is a joyous action, but why isn't my heart moving? Why can't I be more delighted, tremble more, and be happier with her? I don't know. I'm glad we made up. Made up words. Kay is pleased and happy to hear them. I don't feel sad about not understanding though. If I don't understand, then I can just repeat this until I do. If it doesn't work with Kay, then I just try it with someone else. I'm sure the time for me to learn about love will come someday. I might see myself abandoned, bitter and crying. I can't wait. A bottomless quest is pushing me on. That is because of the fact that I don't know. I still have infinite room for learning. It's as if Kiyotaka has given up on attempting to fill something or yearn for Kei, as now he is only focused on whether Kei wouldn't be dependent on him anymore, as he still describes her as a parasite who has gone deeper into its hole. I almost can't believe how quickly she went back to normal. No, it's not so much that I can feel that her dependence on me has increased even compared to before. She wanted to eat together, bathe together, and even sleep together. She wants to spend all her time with me, without letting me go for even a moment. The parasite is going deeper and deeper to the point where it cannot escape on its own. It's stepping in without fear of being captured. 
it is imperative to consider Kei's perspective, despite the story being from Kiyotaka's viewpoint. Kei and Kiyotaka are both in their first relationship, but have different perspectives and goals. While Kei lives in the present and cherishes what she has, Kiyotaka thinks ahead and wants to see if there is a future. Although Kiyotaka is matching Kei's wavelength for learning and satisfying her, his approach to love is methodical and calculated, and therefore won't work. It is a fact that one has no control over the feeling of love for someone. However, Kiyotaka's perspective lacks spontaneity and unpredictability, rendering it incapable of truly loving someone. In my opinion, he needs to experience something unexpected or out of his control to show a side of him that he didn't know existed. It is Kei who would hurt the most if her relationship with Kiyotaka were to end, as her love for him is still immature but pure and innocent. While Kiyotaka might consider it a wonderful experience, for Kei, it would mean everything to her.